Hey there, if you're looking for a high performance alternative data streaming platform, try Repanda. It's fully compatible with Kafka protocol and APIs, meaning your existing clients can seamlessly connect into it. And yes, in Repanda, we use the same concepts and terminologies like consumer groups, producer acknowledgement, and topics partitioning. It's like working with Kafka, but with an upgrade in performance and much simpler in setups and operations. While on the surface, they might seem similar, under the hood, they are quite different. Kafka is JVM-based, while Repanda leverages the power of C++ and c -Start framework. These differences significantly impact CPUs and memory management, making Repanda more efficient right out of the box. If you're curious about these differences, check out my previous videos, and hey, while you're at it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Operating system use page cache to enhance the performance of reading and writing data for all applications running on it. By storing frequent and recently accessed data in your computer memory instead of the slower storage device, it serves as a general purpose caching mechanism that benefits every application on the system. When an application needs to access data, the operating system first check if it's already in the page cache. If it is, it quickly deliver the data to the application so it doesn't have to access the slower storage device. Likewise, when writing data, the page cache temporarily holds the data before transferring it to the storage device, allowing application to continue work on the other task without waiting for the response of data flushing. Kafka heavily relies on page cache from the operating system to achieve its good performance. In the case of reading data for consumers, page cache will strategically read ahead, load the data to page cache beforehand. And in the case of producing data, Kafka assumes once the data reaches the page cache, it's persisted. The operating system will take care of the flushing to the disk. This made Kafka fast and can even make up some time that was lost during garbage collection. And if you want to know more about that, I have explained a video, which I will link it down below. Since page cache need to compromise a lot in order to make it flexible for different type of IO behaviors, it has some drawbacks. For example, in systems with limited memories, it is possible to have contentions between page cache and your other applications. The JVMs, the memory you use in applications, page cache, all works based on the finite amount of memory you have in your hardware. Having all of them fighting for memory is probably not the best idea. Another potential issue is the risk of data loss in the events of sudden power failures or system crash. As data stored in the page cache may not yet be written or flushed to the storage device. Or when error occur during the flushing to disk, page cache tend to fail and not retried under these type of circumstances, so your data will be lost. Without a doubt, page cache is great for making reading and writing data more efficient in general terms. But with Red Panda, we like to take things a bit further. We want to enhance the performance and data durabilities and also solve some of the drawbacks of the page cache. Our goal is simple, tailor it for data streaming. So we will manage our own caching from memory to disk. First, by analyzing the metadata given in the Kafka APIs, Repanda can intelligently decide if it should aggressively read ahead to load the data or we should avoid it all at once. This can save a lot of unnecessary reads from the disk. And for reliabilities, under default setting, we optimize the process to flush data to disk as quickly as possible and only acknowledge the producer when, success, when it's successfully stored in the disks. So no matter if there's a power outage or a system crash, the data is safely stored. If the flush to disk failed, Repanda or the producers will retry it until it's securely stored. Both Kafka and Repanda uses the direct memory access to transfer data between disk and memory in order to free up CPU time. The disk controller that lives in disk will read or write to memory directly without involving the CPU. This increases throughput to and from the device because you're basically eliminating a lot of computational overhead. So your CPU does not have to introduce more context switching to just to transfer data. Instead, it can focus on doing the actual computing process. But since DMA is done in the hardware level, the disk controller can only access memory using the physical address and can only read a contiguous block of memory. 
This brings up another point. When running applications like Kafka that relies on operating systems, virtual memory, everything looks well organized and contiguous. But in reality, the underlying physical memory can be all over the place, very fragmented. So when the disk controller tries to retrieve the data, it may take several attempts for it to go through the entire chunk. Of course, some DMA or disk controllers have some enhancement for this type of situations, but at the end of the day, it's still more effort to locate all of the data. So with Red Panda, we detect and align memory according to the layout of the file system. This reduces the need for the system to reorganize the data during read and write operations. And we also calculate the appropriate buffer size against hardware. We can minimize the number of round trips between disk and memory, but maximize the amount of data transfer at each round. Remember the thread per core architecture? The data in these buffer are filled by each thread. The time for it to fill and be flushed to disk will be much, much more predictable and quicker compared to be using the file-based page cache systems. This enhancement plus the new NVMe disk and the new file system, Rependa can now do multiple reads and multiple writes concurrently. The XFS file system's B-tree structure will let us quickly run multiple operations to the file in separate segments without interfering each other, and it fits nicely with modern SSD drive for its parallel I.O. capability. Data are stored in multiple flash memory chips, and having data stored across the chips might actually make it faster to fetch and write compared to having just one chip doing it sequentially. And it also helps with your SSD drive's wear leveling so your SSD can have a longer life. This is why Red Panda consistently delivers a remarkable throughput metrics. Thank you for joining me. Remember to hit the subscribe and like button if you like this type of explainer videos. There are more resources down at the description. Make sure to check it out. Thank you very much.